Okay, we seem to have a quorum. Uh, we seem to have an applicant. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's a regular scheduled meeting in the town of Berlin, Development Review Board. Uh, we have two related applications before us tonight uh, from Berlin Mall, LLC. Uh, and uh, we see if we have anybody here that wants to be a party to this application tonight, other than the applicants. Hearing none. Um, uh, why don't we go ahead and swear everybody into water into I do uh, introductions intro. first. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll do intros. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Bob Warnick. I'm the chair. I'm all right. Is Tor Nelson? Remember? Please did he come? Tom Badowski, Town of Berlin. Nicola Anderson, Down Street. Matt Moore, Evernorth. We're expecting uh, Kevin Warden, our civil engineer, to be on video any moment here. Uh, Paul O'Leary, O'Leary Burke. Sean Cunningham, O'Leary Burke. Dave Sawyer, Pro Line Select Board. Uh, Paul, you can you introduce yourself? Holly McMurtry, DRB member. Carla, can you introduce yourself? I'm, I'm not muted. No. Carla Nuisil, DRB. Christy, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Christy Flynn, recording secretary. Jason. Jason Lazar, behalf of the applicant, the Berlin Mall. Uh, John, John Friedrich. John. Oh, I was speaking, <laughs> but I was muted. Sorry about that. John Friedrich, member DRB. <laughs> Uh, Chuck, you you walked in. Go ahead. Hi, Chuck Storrow, attorney for Berlin Mall LLC. And we have somebody that's Dave's phone. Who is Dave's phone? This is Dave Roy with Women Lamp. Dave, can you spell your last name on your phone there so we have it? R O Y. R O Y. Thank you. Architect. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's everyone, Mr. Chair. Hi. All right. Thank and, uh, you. Excuse me. Or Orca Media, Media here is also as a. Uh, Kevin Warden is waiting to be let in. Right. Paul, we may have an architect also. Um, unless... Right. Would be surprised if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see him, but hold on. Let me try and locate him. Yeah. Alex. Alex yeah, Matthews. Kevin Starbucks architect. Kevin, you want to introduce yourself? Matt Davidson. Sure, I'm Kevin. I'm working <laughs> with uh, Evernorth and Down Street uh, as a civil engineer for the Fox Run site. Kevin, last name? Kevin Warden. Alex. Alex, please introduce yourself. It looks like he's connecting the audio still. Yeah, he's with Dave Roy, our architect, Mingleland. That's Alex Aftuck, A F T U C. Okay. Thank you. I think that's everyone's own chair. All right. Um, uh, you know what? I just want to interrupt for a second. I, we're, we're getting a couple of notes that folks are having trouble with the website logging on. Has everyone else logged on through the through the agenda, the link to the agenda? Is there a way to just send it out one more time? Do you have it? Jason, you have I, I link directly from the web. Hmm. And so I had no issue, but apparently Joe Davidson is having trouble, and, and I believe Mike Rushman is, is as well. So who should I send it to? Well, if you send it to, at least if you send it to me, I can get it to the folks who I am uh, having an issue or having an issue logging on. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, don't hold back. The yeah. 
Oh, no, no. So, yeah. so we <laughs> taking, a, taking his chair and going home. Just See you later. Later. No, no, no. Come back when the Zooms are done. Uh, yes, Mike Rushman, Land Strategies. Just joining. Pablo, you want to introduce yourself? Anybody know a Sandra Cilia? Yes. She's with Evergrove. And how's Bill logging in now? Yeah. That's the bigger screen. Uh, I'm sorry. That's the point. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Pablo, you want to, Pablo, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, this is Pablo Maderos uh, with Heidenberg Properties. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Oh, somebody else. <laughs> Should be Joe Davidson. Sandra, you want to introduce yourself? Sandra Silla, Cilia. She's with Evernorth. She's not participating. Right. She's, she's muted. Well, she's, no, yeah. Sandra, she's keeping track. expecting anybody else important because I want to proceed. Just Joe Davidson. Pablo, you have anything from him? He told me that he's. It, he was having trouble with the website, but he told me, he sent me a text saying he got it. So he should be logging in momentarily. I'm going to proceed. Um, anybody okay. else wants? I can't see who's up there, but that's okay. You'll tell me, Tom, who's up there. I will. <laughs> um, I need to sit closer. Uh, so what I want to do, the first thing is, um, is swear in everybody to get testimony before this board tonight. Um, if you tend to give testimony, please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. The matter before this board tonight are the penalties of perjury. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, who's going to kick this off? I will. Paul O'Leary. Paul, oh, please. So we're here uh, tonight for a number of items, and we're looking for site plan approval on outlot A which is Starbucks. We're looking for site plan approval for outlot C, which is the new 30 unit Fox Run building. Huh. We're looking for a conditional use approval for Good outlot job. A, because I'm Starbucks right. has a drive-through and a drive-through yeah. requires a conditional use permit on the really? So if hey, I send you- Hey guys, mute your, so you your hmm. not on, mute your you mics, Jason. Zoom. Every other website's working fine. Jason, can you mute you? It's not, it's not me, guys. It's not me. Uh, I'm going to send you a PDF of the. Uh, Pablo, the can you mute yourself? Okay, that's what I'm trying to download. Of course, now I'm calling. Okay. Everyone, everyone, you can mute. If you're not been addressed, 
and recognize, mute yourself. I know I can, all right? Sorry. <laughs> Please. All right, we're also looking for a conditional use approval on outlot C, because it's a 30 unit building and the regulations require a conditional use for anything more than 16 units. And then we're looking for a subdivision approval. The new outlots and the new road configuration uh, requires a new plaque uh, be filed showing those lots. And so to start with. Uh, and you're also looking for conditional use approval on outlot A. Correct. A lot of outlot A and outlot C both need conditional use approval. So the plan that I have in front shows the new proposed realignment of the Berlin Mall Road. It's roughly about 1,100 feet to get to the corner of Walmart from Route 62. And then it also shows a new interior street, which goes by the Starbucks and the Fox Run building. And that street is approximately 500 feet in length. So we're talking around 1,600 feet total of new roadway that would be built. All of it would be type B in conformance with your new zoning regulations, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. But I did want to just uh, uh, look at the plat so that everyone's on the same page. So this is this is the proposed plat for the entire project. Now, plat's not finalized yet because, as we know, the town doesn't yet own the parcel. And then once the town owns the parcel, there needs to be some conversations between well, and Mall's attorney and the town attorney to work out some of the easement languages that's required. But the regulations require a new 65 foot wide right of way for the type B roads. So we have a 65 foot right of way located along the new alignment for Berlin Mall Road. And then we have a 65 foot right of way for the type B street that goes by Starbucks and a 65 foot right of way for the type B street that runs up next to the Fox Run building. The Fox One parcel, outlot C, is shown here, and there also will initially be purchasing this section of right away. Outlot A is where Starbucks will be. We've agreed to give the town an easement on the corner of that outlot for a future sign, you know, something to be worked out in, in conjunction with Berlin Mall Associates in the town. And then we have a proposed stormwater easement that's shown up top in green. That's to both the benefit of the Berlin Mall Associates and also to the benefit of the new town parcel. The stormwater pond is designed to handle stormwater runoff from the Berlin Mall Road, the new Type B road that goes by Starbucks and Fox Run, and its size to take impervious area from the new town parcel in conformance with the town plan. So we've looked at the new town plan, calculated how much impervious area will be on that town parcel, and we've sized that pond to handle that amount too. So just so everyone's on the same page, this is what we end up looking with. 65 foot right away for Berlin Mall Road, 65 foot right away for the two new streets that go by Starbucks and Fox Run. Fox Run's lot, Starbucks lot, a proposed out lot F, which we're not proposing anything at this point in time, but certainly a, what we view as a valuable lot uh, somewhere going down the road, and an out lot G, which is next to the Walmart over here in the Walmart parking lot, which again, we haven't proposed any use on that out lot at this point in time. The highlighted line in yellow shows where the existing school district hopefully town, you know, line is. So, so the, there needs to be some swapping of parcels between uh, Sperling Mall Associates and the town once they own it, and some talk back and forth about how the easement language is going to be worded so that the town gets access to their parcel and the town gets access to the stormwater, and obviously the, the Berlin Mall folks get access to the right-of-way and to the stormwater parcel that will end up on a portion of the town property. So any, any questions on, the, on that plat portion of it? So we're, we're here to talk about the plat too. That's part of our approval tonight, but I hadn't really talked in much detail about it, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone has a picture as to where we're headed down the road. 
I just add, Mr. Chair, that the the in yellow, the school parcel there. Yes. The, they, the school has gone through a subdivision application, has been granted by this board. It's now in the 30 day appeal process. Uh, it, uh, May 29th would be the effective date, assuming no appeal to, to that DRB permit. All right. I want to talk a little bit about how our proposal conforms to the current regs. And, and we went over all this back in December, but it's been quite a while, so I'm not going to hit on all of it, but I just want to tick down through uh, some of the major points. So if we look at, you know, at your base zoning district for the town center district, it does allow multifamily dwellings and it allows restaurants. Um, multifamily dwelling with more than 16 dwelling units requires a conditional use, as does a restaurant use with a drive-through also requires conditional use, as we mentioned before. Under dimensional standards, we're a type B street. We have a, a, a bill two line that has to be within 40 feet from the edge of the curb. Um, the outlaw the building on outlot C is 39 feet, on outlet A is 28 and a half feet, so we comply with the bill two line. Uh, a B street has a parking setback line that the primary parking area for the buildings have to be at least 10 feet behind the bill two line and at least 10 feet from the lot line. We comply on both parking lots to the front setback. Side setback similarly is 10 feet, we comply with that. Uh, rear setback is 10 feet, we easily comply with the rear setback. The lot width, um, minimum lot width of 75 feet, which both lots comply with, and a primary street facade. Both facades have to encompass at least 50% of the lot frontage in both the Fox Run building and the Starbucks building, when you include the wall, uh, meet the 50% standard. Uh, <laughs> Quickly going through the site plan, site plan standards, uh, parking and loading areas are, are shown and are adequate. Um, access, access and circulation, we have a type B street, which is 20. Let me stop for a while. Yes. Uh, because we've covered this before, um, and my memory isn't what it should be. Um, number of spaces, do you have a place where it's written down the number of spaces you have? On the plan, it should it should be labeled how many parking spaces uh, we have. I don't I don't know what they are. Uh, I'd have to like count. Plan. <laughs> there are 15 sheets. Best sheet to go to, John? We don't have them labeled, but sheet three has been the best. Sheet three, sheet three you probably have to count them. Yeah, it shows them, but you have to count them. You have to count them, yes. Do you have a schedule somewhere? I don't believe we do, no. Um, can you provide that? We can certainly provide that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I know you've covered in detail. I don't want you to cover it again. If you think you're confident, you are you meet the standards, that's that's fine. I accept that, but I, I'd like to see a schedule that goes with the two buildings. Gladly. Gladly add that for both. Where they are, you know. I, yeah. I, I do, do recall covering it, but it could have been back in December. Yes, and back in December, I probably could have told you exactly how many parking spaces we have had. <laughs> you know, uh, got a short-term memory on those kind of things. So, does anybody want to hear it now, or we can we move on? I don't hear anybody saying they want to hear it now, so we'll move on. All right. So, in terms of utilities, um, we'll be extending the the water and sewer from the intersection of, at the corner of Walmart um, along Berlin Mall Road. Obviously, we're providing sewer and water services to the Fox Run Building and to the new Starbucks. But we're also providing services to future Outlot F and the future Town Parcel. All right. As I mentioned before, we've uh, designed the stormwater systems to accommodate all of the impervious area that's shown on that plan that's up front. Um, we've made allowances for what we think the impervious area will be on outlot F, which we currently don't have any proposals for. And we've included what we think the impervious area will be on the town parcel. And all that will be permitted as part of the gravel wetland that's shown on the plan. So the plan is when we're done and that stormwater gravel wetland is permitted, um, we will cover all of the impervious area that we expect to have on this portion of the new town center plan. What criteria are you addressing at the moment? 
uh, th that's more of a general uh, statement on utilities. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Paul, is it the intent to uh, build those utilities to town standards and then ask the town of Berlin to assume those? Yes, that is our intent. Okay. So some correspondence to that end needs to be made by your client. Okay. Good from board. So uh, uh, sections on, on the site plan that we had discussions on before, section 3205, outdoor lighting. Right. Originally, um, we had. I'm going to go back to access and circulation. Sure. You don't need to do it right now, but you are talking about two phases to this project. You have not talked about that. Yeah, so we'll You're be talking about that. OK, yeah. Um, uh, maybe we'll go back and revisit that. I have a question about okay. access and circulation uh, for you. Um, Okay. Well, we could visit it now. Okay. Uh, while it's fresh. So that's good in the order of your sheet. <laughs> so, so the, the biggest, the, the biggest change that we have between when we're in December is that we're asking the board to allow us to build a project in two phases. Right. Our preference is to build it in one. If the finances work and things fall in place, we'd like to build it all in one shot. Because obviously, any construction we have on Berlin Mall Access Road affects our tenants. You know, the Walmart folks, everyone who's in the mall gets affected when we have construction on that road. So it'd be nice to just do it once. But currently, you know, the finances haven't fallen into place to allow us to construct the whole thing. So what we're asking the board is to allow us to construct what's shaded here, what we call phase one. So phase one um, contains about two thirds of the roadway. So we, we'd be building from the Berlin Mall Road from this corner in to Walmart, we'd be building the new street that comes in, and but we'd be continue to use the existing Berlin Mall Road for about the first 600 feet until which time we had funding in place or we were ready to develop Outlaw F. So obviously Outlaw F can't be developed until the road is in its new alignment. So it doesn't affect this intersection. This intersection is is designed to be at grade. So there's no changes here when we build it. There's some minor changes in the first 20 or 30 feet of the Starbucks access when we built that road. You know, there's a few inches that needs to be adjusted. But essentially, the grades on Starbucks have been adjusted so that whether it meets the existing Berlin Mall Road or it's the new alignment, which is further to the west, um, very, very minor changes that have to be made in terms of access. So under the phase one plan, we would use the existing Berlin Mall Road to come in and access Starbucks. And then you could either access Fox Run that way, or you, you could continue on the Berlin Mall Road and come in and get to Fox Run on the new section of road. The um, site distance to the new V Street uh, is concerns me. Um, it's Can you address that? It's Starbucks. This one? Starbucks, yeah, the Star well, Starbucks, yeah. You're about 300 feet back. Um, you know, essentially once, you know, some of the trees is cleared, you know, 300 feet should be adequate in terms of site distance. Plus the, the road, the road was fixed based on the Newtown plan, right? So we took the Newtown plan. We said, all right, this is the location. It's within a couple of feet. Of where the new town plan shows that road to be, and that that's where we set it. But typically, three hundred feet back. Yeah, I'm looking for one hundred fifty-five. You know, what speed limit? It's going to be what? We're proposing it to be twenty-five. That's what our traffic. Roger Dickinson did the traffic recommended a speed of twenty-five miles per hour on Berlin Mall Road. You also recommend the site distance of one fifty-five. Yes. And what I wasn't sure of is with phase A, uh, the, with the before you go to the yep. full phase here. Uh, will you have sufficient sight distance uh, to the left? I think that we'll need to clear uh, some of this area in here. If we clear this back, then I think you'll be able to see all the way to the intersection and you'll have plenty of sight distance. And that's one thing that Roger recommended in his traffic report, that we clear some of that brush back on that side of the road. To me, that's critical. In other words, not only do you have to clear it, but you have to maintain it clear, yeah. though, which is always a, a trick, too. But. Uh, people keep wanting to plant trees if they get how fast they grow on their own. Um, so what do you think you have for side distance right there? Without the trees being yeah, cleared? Yeah. Um, 
probably no more than 150 feet. It'd be marginal at this point in time. That, that was my thought. But but certainly, you'd be glad for you to add a condition that 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 be cleared back and maintained. Because we will see probably people entering at speeds in excess of 25 miles an hour. Yes, you will. <laughs> um, Pretty safe. So bet. while the speed will be close to 25, and which it needs to be, uh, and that will be a condition if you have, are proposing that already. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, that was that was my primary question: is that if you don't do what you initially planned day one, how are we for sight distances on that one? Um, I have a similar, similar question on the other one, uh, other access point, uh, Second B Street. Yes. Uh, do you have 155 foot sight distance to the left there? Yes, you do. Not much more than that, but you probably have 175 feet or so. Thank you. That was, that was my question. Well, was there any consideration uh, to making the, the Starbucks access road? Uh, and we need to think of a little name for that, but the, a one way. So one way in the Fox run it up and then out. No, your 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 new town plan standards don't really talk too much about one way. They pretty much look for two way streets, twenty four feet wide, and, and that's what we've designed to. And that's why the right ways that we're closing are sixty five feet in width, because to meet your type B. You know, get the width, the parking lanes, the sidewalks, the green space from the edge. You need sixty-five feet. So, no, I'm su I'm just suggesting until the time when the second phase or B phase is built. Does it? Does that make any sense to, to make that a one way? It sort of cures some of the problems Mr. Warnick was was alluding to here with sight distances and such. Uh, Possibly, I mean, it's designed for a two-way street. I, I would, I would think that we would just build it as such, and and only make a change for one way if it turned out that we had had a problem. Yeah. Well, if we have the same distance, uh, my my concern would be addressed. I just yeah. looking at the curve and what's there now, and knowing fully with the vegetation that's there now, I I know you don't have one fifty-five now. Right. I agree. Um, so something has to be done to make sure you have one fifty-five. Uh, ideally, it'd be nice to see all the way back to where they enter the um, Berlin Mall Road, but certainly you can see most of the way back, you pick them up. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't clear, you know, all, all the way back so you can see the intersection. We own the property. There's no restrictions against what we can clear. So uh, grade-wise, it's not like there's a big hill or anything there that will block. So. I have another question with regard to access, given you're proposing to do this in phases. What will be done with the current access road in the interim. In other words, so, assuming that you cannot deal with that in the next year or so, yeah. you have a road in terrible condition. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and I guess, Jason, I don't know if you or Pablo want to address that, but obviously they're going to continue to maintain the road. Uh, Sean and I just drove through there, and it, yeah, it certainly is in need of some work at this point in time. I mean, it, it, um, it would speak poorly for them all, you had to continue to use that. Right now, everybody's sort of excusing it because it's new construction. Yes. But um, uh, that doesn't improve in the near future. So I guess I, I'd like to know what the plan is. Uh, is it going to be resurfaced? What, you know, any interim? I would think as a minimum, new resurfacing is necessary. Sean or Pablo, you want to comment are on you, that? Or are you part? referring to, uh, are you referring to uh before the the uh, the road is realigned right yes Mr. yes Chairman? uh yeah yes no as part of that we would uh we would do some uh some temporary resurfacing we wouldn't it wouldn't be brought to the town standards because that would be obviously be a uh a, a, a huge expense but it would be temporarily resurfaced uh until such time that the uh, uh that the road would be aligned if for if for, for any reason that never happened then we would uh, consider to uh, consider um, bringing it to town standards. What is that right away? What is the current right away? The existing right away is, uh, I believe, sixty feet. Please, that much. Yes. Thank you.
So I want to talk a little about um, outdoor lighting or the street lighting. Uh, that was a topic that, that came up before and uh, the board had some questions. Um, your current regulations are 50 feet. Uh, we talked about 50 feet being an awful lot of light out there. And so the board asked us to look at some of the neighboring towns and see what they were. So we, we looked at Berlin, downtown Berlin, uh, Barry, excuse me, downtown Barry is about 65 foot spacing. Uh, Montpelier is somewhere between 55 and 60 feet is what their lights are spaced at. So our, our plan uh, for what we propose is kind of splits the difference. We're at 65 feet is the spacing on our lights. It gives you an average lumens of uh, just under two, which is a you know, fair amount of light for you know, a Vermont road. And I think we have a a maximum to or an average to minimum ratio of about six. Um, we can get that a little bit lower, but we'd have to add a few more lights. And, and uh, you know, we felt what we have is pretty decent. Uh, what does the regu regulations call for? Your regulations don't call out, uh, you don't have a number in the regs. You just call out the spacing. So we, we changed it from 50 feet to 65 feet, and they're on both sides of the road um, all the way through. Staggered? Nope. nope. Your regulations show them right opposite each other, and so that's, how, that's what we went. We're matching your zoning reg. We're just increasing the spacing. I did, I did notice that most of the surrounding communities are actually staggered, except for crosswalks. Yeah, like some that. are staggered, some are, yeah. Does the DRB have the latitude to we do. allow that? We do. As I read the bylaw anyway. And one of the other site plan standards that we were lacking at the, the first time around uh, were uh, bicycle facilities. Uh, we didn't show any. Well, we showed the bike path that goes along Berlin Mall Road, but we didn't show any um, bike parking or bike racks on either the Fox One parcel or on Starbucks parcel. And the current site plans have, have bicycle parking shown on both. And both parcels also show um, uh, vehicle charging stations. There's two charging stations uh, shown on Starbucks. And I think there's one or two on, on Fox One. Do you know, Matt? I think so, it's two. I don't know. I think it's two. I think, I think yeah, the, there's, there's two. I think the new Kevin. stretch regs require two. So, so we'll, we'll be getting a total of four charging stations between the two projects. That seems like a lot now, but who knows? <laughs> no, and, and, I, and I think, um, you know, on Starbucks, you know, we're hopefully going to have a, a conversation with the Tesla folks and see if they're interested in, in putting a supercharger there. You know, Starbucks is a nice place if you got to park for 30 minutes. Although there are, I think, two uh, supercharger stations just up the street by Applebee's up, up there. Yeah. Thanks more than two, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a bank of them. So. So, so, Paul, uh, with the realign road, uh, the full build out of the, mm -hmm. the road, there's some wetland impacts. Are you going through that permitting now with this phase one or not? Uh, we are. We have to um, with, with the phase one. Yes, we will have some, some impacts. We, we, we intend on getting all the state permits for both, for both phase one and phase two. So we, we expect to get our stormwater permit, our wastewater permit, um, our permit to construct for the water line, our Act 250 permit for the entire project, not, not just phase one. We want to be able to build, um, like I said, we would like to be able to build the whole thing when the time comes to put the shovel in the ground. Because it's to our benefit and our, customer, our clients' benefits in the mall to build it once and be done. So we will be pursuing all of the permits. And I think... I think Sean's had a conversation with you too about the, the states in terms of the wetland, the state is looking for, this, this has a minor wetland impact, the yes. road, but yeah. they're looking for what are the impacts on the entire new town plant. And they want to look at the, the whole kit and caboodle before they go ahead. Now we've given them the numbers and I think they've improved with the uh, realignment of the multi-use path outside of the yes. Fox Run piece. Right. So, yes. Uh, it, in the grand scheme of things, my personal opinion is the impacts on buffers and wetlands are, for a 118 acre project is is minor, but you know. Yeah. 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 Different people look, think, look at things yeah. different, but that is our intention to permit 
the entire project, and that would mean getting the wetland permit too. Have you had any dialogue about this this particular little curve? Yes, we have. Yes. And and this little bit isn't isn't a lot of heartburn with them, but again, they came back and said, well, we want to know all of the impacts before we, they, they, they don't want to be piecemeal. They, they don't want us to come back and get, you know, a, a few hundred square feet here. And then a long history yeah. of that, yeah. yeah. And, and we do have an overall plan showing the estimate yes. of that, but he wanted a little, sounded like they yeah. wanted a little more detail, maybe some grading or, okay. Yeah. So we are pursuing that. Good. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going in order of your presentation here, uh, or Sean's presentation, whoever. Uh, and um, the next after your outdoor lighting. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Bill. We have a select board member here. And, and so when you build this, the new road, the Starbucks Road and a Fox Run connector road and, and, and over to the mall, what you have sh shaded here. Do you anticipate asking the town to, to take over those roads at that time um, outside of the full build out? Yes, as soon as a road is constructed to the type B standard, then we would anticipate asking the town to take over the road. So we would be writing an offer of dedication for that 65 foot right away, we'd be asking for them to take it and then begin maintenance of it. Okay. Typically, we would expect to be a warranty period of you know two or three years. We'd be responsible for the road, and at the end of the warranty period, it, it would become theirs. So, so in the end, we expect the town to own and maintain the Berlin Mall access road from Route 62 all the way to Walmart, and then also the road, the, the loop road that goes by Starbucks and Fox Run. And, and I think that's what the new town plan calls for. They call for calls for the town to to own and control that road. And that's what the plot shows. That's, that's why we have the 65 for right of ways. The intention is, is that all that will be deeded to the town of Berlin at some point in time in the future. They may have had an expectation that it would be all the road. So that's okay. what I'm saying, giving you that forewarning. So um, Mr. Chair, would you like me to check down through all the items or? Uh, uh, yeah, just if you would, because I, I do have a couple of additional concerns that I have listed in order. Okay. Um, and I guess I don't, I don't know what the other board members uh, uh, have similar concerns, but we want to be able to vet it. it I know much of this has been covered previously, yeah. um, and I'm trusting that you're telling us changes now and only in respect to the changes and highlighting any changes. Um, um, for instance, the next one is signs. Yes. And are you asking for, yes. I just have, so I just wanna, I'm assuming this is true, but I, the, so the, the financing for the road is not, is, is that for Fox Run is, this doesn't affect that by not completing the entire road? Uh, I don't, I don't believe it affects us. Okay, I just, I just wanna verify that. Is, as long, as long as we have access, to to get into the to get into our building to get a certificate of occupancy, then uh, then we're good. Uh, I just uh, remember we had a meeting with somebody about that grant money, and it seemed as though there was a lot of strings attached. So I just wanted to be sure. Yeah, I, I think it would be good to to have a meeting soon with BCDP to talk about that grant and. The town ownership, uh, uh, I believe, is what they are looking for. But that's doesn't that doesn't matter for the ability of us to build our project. Whoever owns the road owns the road, as long as we can get in. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Well, oh, it's important question. It's important issue. Okay, hearing none. Um, what I was going to ask you about was the next criteria, which was signs. Are you yes. asking for permission for signs at this time? We we show proposed sign locations for the Starbucks parcel. Um, we are not. We haven't submitted information yeah, on, on the signs. It's our understanding that. Oh, please mute. Please mute. Good lord. 
what I suffer from, what I go through. I can't see who's talking. Dave's phone. You're good, Mr. Chair. So we show signs, uh, proposed signs for Starbucks, mostly directional signs and things. Um, you know, the free, sta free I'll be standing honest with you, signs. I looked at the plans, I couldn't find where the locations were. So I was, yeah. I, I expect if I spent another couple hours, I'd find them. Some of them on the Starbucks just details, signage. just direction signage. So when we had talked at the last meeting that, that the signs were, were typically handled by Tom and that they'd come in for separate applications to Tom. For if you're doing that at this point, that, that's yeah. fine. I yeah. just, I was, looking, I was looking for a schedule of signs, okay. and I did not see a schedule of signs. Uh, a lot of signs are being proposed. I do think the signs addressing traffic, we need to know about now. Um, stop signs, yield signs, whatever you're proposing. Okay. Um, and it goes back to traffic access and circulation. I, I couldn't be certain. Uh, number one, you don't state in the application the speed limit will be 25. Um, your testimony tonight is that it will be. Okay. Um, but I also want to be certain that we have stop signs at all the right locations. We'll add, uh, we'll add the uh, location and the sign details for the speed limit signs. And I'm not the saying they aren't there. I just could not no, find them. We'll, we'll add them, make sure they're there. Pedestrian crossings, too. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, that, that was my next point. I did not yep. see pedestrian crossing signs. Okay. We will add those. And uh, that needs to be part of this application, not not your separate sign application. Mm -hmm. I agree. I know you have directional signs planned for um, Starbucks, and I, I assume there'll be also uh, uh, some directional signs for Fox Run parking and that kind of thing. I, I just, those are, uh, you deal with Tom on that. Security signs on the buildings, you deal with Tom on that. Yep. But uh, the road signs, I want, I want to be certain that we have the necessary uh, traffic control yep. signs. Yeah, we'll do a separate sheet just for signs. So they're yeah. easy to buy. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I sort of know where they would be, should be, but I sure. want to be sure that you know. Uh, I agree. I know you stole it. But <laughs> I agree. Let's see it on drawings. I couldn't find a single drawing that gave me signs. Yeah. Thank you. All right, the next criteria was performance uh, standards, um, noise, glare, odors, vibration, electrical radio interference, waste storage, particular matter, airborne solids, flammable toxic or hazardous substances and waste. Um, we don't anticipate any of those adverse effects. 32 and 9 is erosion control. Those erosion control plans are included. Uh, we will be getting an erosion control permit or stormwater runoff from construction site permit for, for the project before we can proceed. And it will be a general permit of 90-20 because we'll be disturbing more than one acre of soil. Uh, 3210 is stormwater management. As we've talked about before, we will require a state operational uh, stormwater discharge permit. Uh, we'll be using gravel wetlands to treat the runoff from the Fox One building in the parking lot and from the Starbucks, the future outlot F, the future town parcel, and a reconstructed uh, Berlin Mall roads, as we talked about. Uh, Stormwater will actually be treated to a hundred year standard um, in this case because of the size of the mall. Because it's on the mall property, we have greater than 10 acres of impervious area. Wow. And so we have to go to the hundred year standard on uh, our sizing for the for the larger storms. The, um, so uh, where are you on your state permitting process? These are two key permits that we're not going to we're not going to review your material per se. We're just going to say yep. conditional use. We're uh, use the design for all the stormwater ponds are done for the gravel wetlands, and we have haven't yet submitted that because we don't have um, approval from this board. But that will be one of our next steps. Okay, so you have not submitted that. We have, have not. I assume you've had dialogue, however. We've had dialogue, and obviously we're doing some work for the town uh, with Tom on the whole Berlin Wall property. Right, so right. we've had a number of dialogues with the state. So the, 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 the go forward maintenance of the stormwater pond that's on the shared properties, that's uh, Berlin Mall LLC responsibility. I think that's that's something that the town lawyer and Berlin Mall lawyer are going to have to work out at, as to who. Obviously, a portion at which time the town takes over the roads and the impervious on the town owned parcel, they'll likely have the largest percentage of impervious surface going to the gravel wetland. So that's that's an item of negotiation between the town and the Berlin Mall folks as to 
who maintains the pond? Do they split costs on the pond? That you know, that's that, that's something that needs to happen going I, forward. I would suggest that your client begin those discussions before this permit comes to its fruition. I, I think it's germane to to it. I, I really do. Well, until which time the town takes over the road, uh, obviously it's all Berlin Mall. You know would would operate and maintain that gravel wetland. Have you developed numbers on the cost of the annual maintenance? Uh, we have not. But I presume you can easily do that. We can easily do that. It's not a lot on a gravel wetland, actually. It's pretty minor. About every five to eight years, you've got to clean out, you know, a portion of it. And that's, you know, again, that's not a large cost. So, but we can certainly do that. Okay. Um, I, I, I just sit here and I, I just want to ask a question. Introduce yourself, you would please. I'm Dave Sawyer on the select board, and, and I'm looking at this part A that you're, you're talking about constructing these roads and possibly the town of Berlin taking over the maintenance of those roads, be it plowing or whatever, uh, for the winter time. If the access road isn't done, I, my only concern is, is liability to the town. In town equipment where we're not coming from a town road onto this parcel that you've got. There's no way for the town trucks, town employees to, to get to those roads to maintain them. And I would like to know what the liability to the town would be, uh, be for the equipment if something was to happen on the privately owned roads getting to those roads. That's a concern that for some reason, I, you know, and I'm only one member of the board, but that's a concern I have, uh, is being able to maintain those roads until the time that you've constructed the, uh, to the state highway road. Well, to be honest, I would agree with you. I think until which time um, you own the road all the way out to Route 62 and you have access in, then you couldn't be expected to take over that portion of the road and maintain it. You okay. can't really travel over a private road to get to a section of road that you need to maintain. So, okay. That, that, that was one, you know, my thought there, <laughs> because it, I, I thought I heard that you would, we'd be, you know, once it was constructed, we'd be looking for the town to take over that. And I can't see that happening until, you know, it's taken it's to the state yeah, highway. I would agree. And owning the first 50 feet doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions by the board? Um, you are going to conditional use standards? Correct. So uh, conditional use approvals required on outlot A for the drive through and outlot C for the building with more than 16 units. Section 3302, capability of community facilities and utilities. Uh, proposal will not cause an undue burden on the town's ability to provide community facilities and utilities. Proposal aligns with the vision of the new town center. Now we have adequate water and sewer um, along with stormwater capacity for both of those proposed buildings. Both of those have already been allocated, is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Yeah. Chair. And uh, have you had feedback from the uh, at least you did early. I did early on. Very early on. And, and from fire from, from both. Uh, yeah. Really no no issues. Well, there were issues, but they yeah. were. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Not showstoppers. Yeah. Besides, you wanted a new fire truck, and uh -huh. a ladder truck. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a part of Yeah. That was part Now you give us the idea. <laughs> you know, trust me, yeah. you know, the hospital there, it's, it dictates what we need for equipment. I'm sure it does, yes. Um, so section 3303 is tra traffic. Uh, we have a traffic assessment that was done by Roger Dickinson. That's part of your package. Um, Roger looked at the traffic, looked at the intersection with the Berlin Mall Road and Route 62, uh, looked at the intersection with the Berlin Mall Road uh, on the other end with Ferry Road, and then looked at the signalized intersection and, and determined that the project would not have an undue impact on any of those three intersections. Roger did recommend that we provide speed limit signs, which we talked about 25 miles an hour, and that we do some additional clearing along the entrance to improve the sight distance, which we are agreeable to do. And he made a recommendation for the 155 foot sight distance at a 25 mile speed limit. Correct. 
what he didn't do is, or my opinion is, he wasn't able to say one way or the other whether or not your your distances between your opposing, for instance, you have opposing driveways uh, uh, where the B Street enters um, uh, to the north. Um, yeah, yeah, right there. Uh, not a desirable feature. I understand it's shown that way in the town, the town plan. So, uh, do I fault you? No. Fault somebody else? Probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, the, um, uh, but I'm, I'm guessing as long as we 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 make sure we have the 155 foot distance, sight distance, we're we're in good shape. Uh, section 3304 is character of the area. Uh, in our view, both proposals are compatible compatible with the area aligned with the new town center master vision. Section 3305, natural resource protection. Both proposals protect natural resources with zero ground disturbance to the recently delineated class two wetland. There will be some uh, impact to the wetland buffer associated with that small wetland that's to the west of the project. Energy conservation's uh, proposal, including the realigned Berlin Mall Road to New Type B Street, incorporate multiple energy efficient modes of transportation, such as the multi use path and ample sidewalks, as well as being directly on the bus line. Electrical vehicle charging stations are provided at both proposed sites. Um. And we would do have some further talk. Uh, not on conditional use standards, no. We could talk about subdivision standards if you'd like. Um, we're not much schedule wise about. subdivision. Uh, I've, I've sort of lost sight here of how that's going to proceed. I mean, we've got obviously got to got to finish the transition between the school and the town. Not for their subdivision, they did. no, 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 for their subdivision, no. No, I, I think I think you're not um, proposing. Yeah, you're, you're, you. What we'd have to watch is the we have a once you approve it, we have 180 days to file the plat, and so within that 180 day, obviously we can't file the plat until the town owns the property, <laughs> and um, and until the town and the Berlin Mall folks have worked out some of this easement language that's needed. So I I don't think it's holding you up from approving us. We just need to keep that in mind that if if those elements all don't happen within the 180 days the, the state statute well, gives least, us, we'd have to come back. The administrator has the authority to extend that 180 days, X number of days. Is that not true? I believe so, but I'd have to confirm I'd have to that. Check the bylaw. I believe the bylaw allows, not that that solves the problem necessarily. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 180 days goes by real fast. Thank you. Yes, it does. Um, yes, it does. But, but I wouldn't think encourage your client again to reach out to the town and yes and, and i think chuck's already started to have some yeah. conversations with the town attorney on so it has to happen i'll just re reiterate the the thought process with the with the school parcel i met with the, some of the officials uh the other day they're meeting schools meeting tomorrow on, on an update um i'm assuming may 29th the the um Warning: The um, appeal period on that zoning on that z subdivision permit is is over. We we the town has retained a, a surveyor. Then to they, he'll go immediately go out and set the pins of from from that uh, develop the plat, submit the plat to the to the to the town mm -hmm. uh, town clerk record of the town clerk. Uh, the town is is in process of drafting a, a quick claim deed language mm -hmm. for the school district's edification. I see them having that in hand by the end of this month. So so that process is is moving okay. along r relatively quickly. So just to assure folks that that's what our sense of, okay. uh, of this is. <clears throat> um. So in the subdivision standards, you want to go to sure. I, you have section. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I have any questions. Maybe if somebody else does. I, the only question I had was the um, yeah. Um, had to do with the suitability of the land, which addresses the uh, the wetland issues. You've already yeah. addressed that. Yeah. 
Well, most of the answers to the subdivision standards are that it's been developed in accordance with the new town center. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so it all hangs there. And if I could add something to that, Mr. Mr. Chair, as, as, uh, as you know, we have a, a conditional uh, designation. Yes. The, the, the Planning Commission has developed uh, some zoning regulations that have gone through a, a public hearing on that. The, the select board has uh, met last night on uh, one of two public hearings they have to, to hold to make those zoning regulations um, uh, approved, mm -hmm. approve those zoning re regulations. Yeah, we anticipate that the uh, at the their meeting on June sixth, assuming no nothing that is untoward or unexpected, is that they will then approve those zoning uh, changes, which will then become effective June seven. Um, and we have spoken to the folks from the downtown board, and they have given us assurance that if we. Uh, uh, make these changes. They were involved in the, in the help of these changes. And on June 7th, we will get their authorization that our conditional Newtown Center permit is no longer conditional. It'll be fully, fully best. That's great. So, great. So you had had some questions about the uh, Starbucks design. So I think I'm, I'm going to take us back to the architectural standards. Yep. So we have uh, the architects uh, online and we'll talk about uh, the changes that he made in response to your comments. And then Matt's team, um, you know, they had some minor revisions that they made uh, to the Fox Run building again in response to some of your comments and he's prepared to address those. Great. That's where we need to go next. So we'll so turn it over to building. Matt, Matt uh, or Joe. Joe. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, you can your own screen. All right. You want, right. So you, you'd have to take yours down. Joe, if you're showing a screen, can I can I what? can I share mine then? Yeah, but Joe, yeah. Sean's got to take his down. Okay, we're on. Right. Okay. Okay, we can see it. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to kind of highlight the changes and the comments that we um, received and um, and how we responded to from our last meeting. Um, so I think some of the comments that um, we, we took to heart were that we needed to add some articulation in the wall and break up the roof line a little bit more. And if you recall, this was just kind of one um, level of roof at 25 foot. Um, I know the um, we kind of discussed that the 25 foot and the architectural standards was um, a little bit flexible in, in, in the uh, approach and how we do it. So um, what we had done is we had taken the entry feature here and moved this out. Um, a little bit and actually increased the height to 28 feet. Um, we also less. Excuse me, Joe. Yes. You, you have a typed page on your screen that we're seeing. Oh, crap. All right. It's, I'm sorry. I didn't see the highlighted part here. Okay. There we go. Sorry. I have too many monitors and it's showing me that I'm sharing a screen. That's not that screen. Um, <laughs> it's, all right. Um, I'll start over. Um, so we had um, talked about changing the heights and varying the materials and adding a little bit more articulation to the facade. Uh, so what we did is we increased the height over the entry. We pulled the entry feature out a little bit to give it a little break and relief from the facade. This is now 28 feet high. Uh, we left this feature at the 25 feet high with the wood material finish. Um, we had added this element here, which is a vegetated um, green screen so that uh, ivy and stuff can kind of grow up the wall and kind of add a little bit more interest to this, uh, what was a, a blank uh, brick and ephus wall. Um, 
And then inside this, we had cut out like random size circles to give it a little bit more interest and put some um, lighting inside that as well to give it some interest and uh, artistic effect at night. Uh, we also, does someone have a question? I, I will here. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll ask it now. Sure. So, so that center panel that you've raised and, and pulled out, yes. right? How, what is the, what's the depth of the pull out from the back wall? It, it, it's about eight inches. Eight inches. Is that standard? Uh, well, what we use is, 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 you know, um, six inches of, of, of framing. And then um, obviously the finished materials go on top of that. So that gives it closer to eight inches. I said it's about eight inches um, because we're going to have some some finishes and insulation and then the um, wood finish over top of that. So, yeah, I mean, there's no real standard in terms of how far to pull this out. Um, but at a certain point, then we have to start um, providing structure for this. So this is just kind of, again, pulled out enough to kind of give you uh, a break uh, of the materials. Um, and again, these, these are kind of like Starbucks is they like these materials that they had selected. So we we're trying to can keep the use of them, but break them up to kind of give some more visual interest to the design. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, over here, um, again, we, we had the green screen and, um, and I'm going to jump around a little bit here um, because I, I'm going to move from rendering to rendering. So um, this. Uh, well, uh, one of the comments that we received was that the opening over towards the, the dry vial side was uh, should be shifted over to the opposite side. So we did relocate this brick wall um, opening closer to the uh, main building so that it is is further away from the, the drive aisle here. Um, I'm going to move to another rendering, which is the uh, screen wall that we had before, um, which is this element here. Um, again, the comments that we um, took to heart here were that, you know, this is a long wall, it needs to be broken up a bit, and maybe we could add some um, public art or public notification areas to this wall. Um, so what we had done is this wall was a, a brick wall all the way up here. Um, I can actually show you. So this is the wall that we were talking about in the original design here. And in the new design, we have added additional um, materials. So we pulled some of this wood material from the building, brought it over here, lowered the brick and added these two um, public art panels, which can be used by, by the local community to, and again, this is just uh, you know artistic renderings. These can be used for, um, whatever type of art or display, or even if you wanted to like a public um, notification board or something here. Um, so that's, that's what these elements were. And again, we raised the heights of the public art elements and I'll get to the heights of this when we get to the elevation. Um, but again, we did, you know, add, I think you can see from, from the original design here to the new design there, there's a lot more articulation and uh, interest in the overall um, design. Joe, is there power on that on that wall? Uh, we really haven't got into that level of detail yet. Um, I, I don't- we're not, we're not proposing power there, yeah. Tom? Is there something that you were thinking that would um, be needing power there? Well, you just mentioned some sort of bulletin board that, you know, maybe a light, lights on the on the on the I, art um, i don't I, I, th this is pablo excuse me uh for for interrupting uh, the presentation but uh the idea of a community bulletin board i'm not really sure that that works uh well in a uh, in a, a public building um so i think it's it'd be better served as two uh uh public art display um panels uh and i think there's sufficient lighting uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the in the parking lot and around the building, that uh, it'll be it'll be visible at night. It's more of a, a daytime feature, but um, I, we don't really want to um, provide spotlights on it. What's typical? 
typical of what? Um, if if you've done one of these walls, you've probably done walls like this in the past. No, we have not. This is we're doing this for uh, to address uh, address the uh, the comments. Um, I'll just, you know, in, 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 you know, again, we do a lot of different projects across the country. Thank you. Um, these, these public art walls or whatever that we do, it's just a variety of different options. And I think, uh, to Pablo's comment, when there's enough general area lighting around here, they aren't spotlighted. Um, and I know we just put a public art, uh, element on, on a large, um, self-storage building in, um, in Colorado, and that did not have any uh, specific lighting. And again, that was more of a design feature and 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 um, just kind of integral with the finish and materials of the building. So Thank I don't you. know that there's really a typical answer to this yeah. public art. Generally, most public art that you see, if you, you know, I mean, a lot of it happens in the cities is not lit. It's just on the building. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the um, one other comment was to ask if we could provide a rendering of the rear um, part of the building uh, through the drive drive aisle. Uh, this is that rear element of the uh, drive aisle building. Again, the materials uh, and heights are varied, um, very similar to what we did along the front side of the building, but we don't have the green screen wall here because it is not feasible to have anything grow with the limited amount of space that we do have uh, along this drive aisle side. Uh, this is, I'm just gonna kind of go through this. It, it, nothing's really changed on the floor plan other than we have broken up this um, screen wall and uh, again, changed the height from six feet high um, screen wall all the way across to the eight foot high local art walls and then relocated this um, opening from right over here to here. Um, again, uh, the last couple comments are really kind of addressing on the elevations. Um, we had added, I believe one of the comments was how much percentage of each material was on the facade. So we added a table here um, for all the areas of each uh, material finish and then the percentage of each of those finishes per um, the elevation. We did not do it as a, a total building, but more as a, um, a per elevation. And I think that comment came from just kind of determining uh, from your architectural design standards that EFIS um, material couldn't be used as a predominant or, or there was no kind of um, definition, I guess, of, of what that predominant was. Um, but I, I would argue that, um, you know, on on a lot of the facades, on the front facade here, it's, it's like, I'm sorry, I can't read that much screen, 16.8%. Um, on the right side elevation, which I did, one of the other comments was to change the name of that, which we had done. Um, it is at 42%, 0.8%. On the rear side, it is at 31.9%. And on the patio left side, it's at 0%. So uh, on all the facades, it's, it's below 50%. Um, and and uh, on a lot of facades, it's significantly below 50%. So I believe that, you know, we are meeting the intent of the uh, design, architectural design standards for the town. Um, and, and that's really the changes that we made um, and hope that that, you know, kind of addresses a lot of the uh, board comments that we received the, the last time and I will um, open up to any questions that you may have. Questions by the board. Yes. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I think it's improved. I, I agree. I think it's a good improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there no other questions? I will proceed to uh, box one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I'm going to stop my share now. So, thank you, Chuck. Kevin, are you ready to uh, start with the civil for Fox Run? And then we'll go with the architectural after. Indeed, I am. Um, 
So this is uh, the site plan for Fox Run. And I'll just start by saying we've been in close coordination uh, with, with Sean at O'Leary Burke. And you know, the master plan shows basically this site. And I'll just point out a few of the amenities and particular items that are more closely coordinated uh, for the for the residents uh, of the Fox Run site here, and not not spend any time on on larger details. Um, I mentioned the electrical car vehicle parking spaces in the back, uh, the ADA spaces right near the entry. There's a community garden outside and a play space um, right right as you enter the building from the the rear, the parking side. Snow storage, trash. The utility shelter and smoking shelter are shown, bike racks, uh, picnic benches, or sorry, uh, bench areas uh, right outside on the way in a canopy. Uh, around the side, there's an ADA access that leads to the side door uh, that also has stairs down to the sidewalk and you know area of parallel parking on the B Street. And uh, again, around front, a uh, slight change from the master plan that shows the entry door coming off the building, which Alex can show in a little more detail, and an L-shaped stair that kind of makes for a nice front stoop coming down um, to the future multi-use path on Berlin Mall Road and aligns directly across the street um, from the, the housing that's being built there now, the elderly housing. Uh, Stormwater is provided on site here uh, for the, the parking and the roof. Our plans do show a conceptual stormwater for the B Street here. Um, keep in mind, these were developed ahead of the town vote and um, allow this project to proceed if necessary with state permitting, uh, if something should happen with a delay for the town process of taking over the land, expanding Berlin Mall Road and developing and permitting the um, kind of coordinated um, Berlin Mall stormwater that's located to the northwest uh, off this site plan. So that is to say that you know this site, as Matt pointed out earlier, it can proceed with access off the existing Berlin Mall, um, and I think uh, should be fully permittable. Um, accordingly, we we have another plan that shows grading, um, and unless there's really any questions on that, I'm prepared to turn it over to Alex, who is going to touch base on some landscaping and the architecture. I, oh. I, I have a question. Hi, Polly. Um, I guess the last time in December we were talking and there was some concern because you had the, the steps had, um, I think the risers were like seven inches and the steps were only, ele the treads were only 11 inches. And it was suggested that you make them a little more standard, which is a, a, yeah. a, a smaller so, riser and a little larger tread. Yeah, that's been done. And part of the L shape you see here facilitates a six inch rise and a 12 inch run, which is more of a site-based uh, okay. stair. Yep. Thanks for that question. Any other questions on site work? Really not much other than the entrance is over there. There's not much change, is there? Nope. I mean, I think Alex might show you or the um, renderings. There's a, there's a wall here along this stair. So minor little things, uh, Bob, but nothing major. Okay. We'll be updating our plan set to match with what they have. There's uh, some small variations. Yeah, and actually I have one question to go back to you on right after we're done cross section. Go ahead with the architectural. Uh, yeah, it's Alex Aptuck. Um, I will pull up my, share my screen here. Uh, everyone can see that. Um, so we, yeah, we, Kevin kind of mentioned that one of the larger changes was really uh, sort of at the stair level, at the stairs into the building. So on, on this, we've gone to a six over 12 stair. Uh, so it's a little bit more gracious. Um, that also gives us that sort of little front entryway. So you have a little front porch to the building now, um, which is, I think, we tr you know, it's a steep site. So we tried to, we've been trying the whole time to really make sure that we have a good front entrance. 
um, which is tricky on a steep site. So we've tried to sort of get that little front porch going. In addition to that, um, also we've we've sort of added a little sort of a side a side entry here with a um, you know there's potential for you know like a nice board form concrete wall or something clean or you know signage or something along those lines to sort of uh, indicate this is where you know the fox run is. Our siding is all um, it's we're looking at plank siding something similar to a KWP a mineral based siding. Uh, that would meet the regulations of the town center district. And we'd be looking at two different, uh, one say like a horizontal and maybe a vertical wood colored, uh, wood look siding to sort of help uh, offset a little bit at these stairs and living rooms is where we have that, um, that those sort of indents showing where, you know, could have a little bit of art articulation to the building. Um, Alex, what, what's the depth of your indents? Um, I believe those are at a foot right now. Um, there's, we've looked at a few different ways of doing it, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, you're trying to make it the more ins and outs in a building you have, the better looking it is, but also the more, less efficient it is. So it's sort of trying to get the right sort of balance between those two things. So, um, and ours are indented, not coming out, but, um, so. And these, these would be sort of the back elevations we have on the, uh, and I can show that in a rendering, it might be more, uh, a little bit clearer. On the back side, we're, uh, excuse me, my computer is a little funky right now. Uh, on the back side, we have our garden beds and a community, so we have a community garden and a playground on this side. So we're trying to, even though because of the steep site, we had to sort of put things more to the back of the building, but we're, we're still trying to have as much of a front step and a front uh, appearance as we can. And other than that, I think you already know that it's a 30 unit building approximately, uh, I think it's 15, 14 one bedrooms, 15 two bedrooms and a, and a three bedroom. So it's a, you know approximately half one bedroom, half two bedrooms and an extra three bedroom in there. Are there any other sort of major topics that we should touch on in architectural? Or? No, but I have a question about your rendering. Sure. It doesn't show the existing trees along Route 62. What your site plan does. Is this just to you simplified the rendering? I mean, um, it looks sort of desolate without he's <laughs> around it no you're right we there are a lot more there's going to be a we're leaving all of the trees in the wetland area and yeah, okay along that road so you're, okay. you're right it's, they're kind of in the very back corner there but they 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 would be staying there yeah we tried to we tried to really push our building up towards the street um and to sort of stay out of that wetland area and keep as many of the trees as possible yeah definitely Questions, other questions about board members? Hearing none, are there any questions uh, in, in total of the uh, project? Thank you, Alex. Thank, Thank you. you. I had one question for you, Paul. Sure. Uh, and that was uh, going back to your cross sections, uh, road sections? Yes. For Bell and Mile Road. And I apologize for the front page. Six. Six. And it shows the cross section uh, between, um, uh, yeah, the Ball, Brilliant Ball, Ball Road cross section station uh, 1730 through 2065. Yes. It doesn't show a sidewalk on the um, left side that's there now. And I just wondered if that's. Am I missing something or no? Should should be on there. I mean, that's that's yeah, that's the existing sidewalk. That's yeah, in right. Front of right, right. It's, it's beyond the limits of your work, but yeah. it's yeah, it's it's 
I just want to be sure we had a sidewalk over there. <laughs> we didn't it should lose be it. there because it, it, it'll be within the right of way eventually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll fix that. Yeah. Just that was the one thing I just I looked at it afterwards. And I said, like, you know, something's missing here. We'll probably, we'll probably we'll probably add a couple more cross sections because you know in some places we have just parallel parking on one side on the you know the tight. I, I, I thought of that. It, would, it, it would be both sides. We should show a couple of the variations. Yeah. So that it's yeah. Clear. Just what you're getting. Yeah. yeah, of course, for, for, for instance, that cross section doesn't represent but about half of that, that stationing. I agree. Or less than half of that yeah. station. I'm sure what you were doing there, but I mean, um, missing that sidewalk on the side was key feature. We, we should have the correct cross section for each or every portion of the road. You should be able to look at a station and say, oh, it should this, be, this is the one that comes. Yeah. Yeah, it would be, it would be helpful just just so that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. We do have different lots, and so it's-, yeah, it's I agree, know, it's, yeah. It's okay. All right, I just wanna be sure I have that right. Are there any other questions? Um, we really, are we positioned to hear the subdivision in the totality? Do we have sufficient information, Tom? I, I believe we do. They, they've changed it. Um, and I think their changes reflect what their, what mall property is now. They, the first time around, they included the school property in it. And, and uh, so I, I think they have everything yeah. here. Yeah. I guess, I guess I, I didn't look at the plat real well. I'm not sure I even have the plat you showed. Yeah. You, you probably have just the phase one plat. Yeah. And, and I, and I, so without being able to see the plot, I wasn't sure if they had all the easements identified. I mean, you know, if you're going to do a subdivision, uh, you know, I need to see the easements and everything else is going to be involved. And um, I, I think that you should reserve the right at the DRB to review the final plot. That, that's my opinion. I mean, obviously, it's best for me if you just say, okay, fine. But I think there's going to be enough stuff on the final plot between the easements language between you know what happens with the town and what happens with the developer that i think once the lawyers are done and the legally is is done i would suggest that it should come back before this board just to make sure you're okay. is it essentially you have final approval on the subdivision board of this Correct. application is that Correct. is that essential at this point in time it's not essential that we have. I would think it would not. Be. I mean, think in general, you're giving us approval. We approve the site plan. But I think you should reserve the right to to review the minutiae that goes along with the final plot. That, that's my opinion. But that, that's what I was saying. It's just going to, there's going to be enough detailing, yeah. if you will, yeah. uh, that um, uh, it would be a, we be hard pressed to prove something that's going to change. In fact, you know? I, I agree. Yeah. Question, just clarification. Are you talking about the phase two subdivision? No, we're talking about the plat that actually gets filed. All right. You know, I, I showed that before, you know, that shows the, the, the properties, you know, that, that's the deeds and stuff are written. So at this point in time, we, we don't have a final plat because one, the town doesn't own the property. And then there's this back and forth between Bill and Mall's attorney, your attorney. And the town as to just what the final easement language uh, is, is going to be. For instance, you know, you want to make sure that you have the rights to, to use all the roads and stuff at, at which time the town takes them over. So. I would encourage that, so, that the parties talk before the legalese begin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think we're pretty well set, but I think at this point we're ready for the legalese to begin. Is, uh, is there, if I may, is there a preliminary plat approval? Well, that's essentially what we have. That's essentially what we're talking about. It's plenary plot approval. But, but. We don't have one in se identified in our bylaws. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, it's not that, that's, uh, you know, uh, we could approve it subject to something. Uh, we've not done that before. That's, that's you know, it's, it, we always have, there's always a condition. That one, of the, one of the conditions we have classically is you have to file with 180 days. Otherwise, it's not real. Um, we could add another condition, which is that you bring back the final plat for uh, approval. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, Tom, but I don't see anywhere in the bylaws says we can't do that. 
I, I think that so I think I think I think your suggestion is a good one, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying we need to come back and present it. I think you just should is be allowed right? to yeah. see it before it's filed. That's all. Um, I, I guess I'm good with that. I guess I'm good with that. Any questions by board members on that issue? I mean, we're, we're generally approving lots mm -hmm. be subdivided, but the point being that there's going to be other stuff yeah. and uh, easements for, you know, and some of them you identified, you need yes. easements for um, uh, waste to the stormwater disposal, that yes. kind of stuff. But until you get your permits, uh, especially the weather permits, you, they may have other issues. Come right. Okay, I'm good. If there are no further questions, I would entertain a motion to uh, close the one portion of this hearing. Both applications. Both hearings. Yeah. So moved. Motion been made by Cooper, okay. seconded by Polly. Is there a discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Or aye. Raise your, aye. Raise your aye. hand. Aye. Thank you. Uh, and the water forces hearing is closed. Thank would you, you. Believe, would you believe that? Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. We have one more uh, item. Minutes. Minutes of our last meeting. I, I wasn't. I don't know if the board has commented on it. I haven't seen comments yet. They just came out, I think, over the weekend. See, they came out. Yeah. 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 Um, so we have the. Um, this, Good night, uh, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you very much. I know everybody, everybody here is excused except for the board members. <laughs> so, Bless you, one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. We do have the minutes of um, May 3rd, and um, I reviewed them. Holly reviewed them. I assume, I assume everybody's looked at them, and I've gotten received no comments. So I would a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Thank you. Motion been made by Tour to approve the minutes of May 3rd. Okay. Second by John. And uh, uh, discussion? All of us in favor of that motion, please say bye bye. Raise your hands. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, this board want to go deliver a session. Yeah. I think we probably so, need to. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to uh, entertain a motion to go deliver the session. Polly? So moved. <laughs> Gotta get to something, Polly. Still have guests. Been seconded. Um, yep. Uh, so, um, uh, all those favor of that motion to go into the session, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 And uh, we will go to the session as soon as everybody's taken off the uh, internet. And we and everybody's leaves the rooms. Back here. All right. We exited um, the little session at um, 8 51. Uh, and is there any other business to come before this board tonight? No. Covered everything. Uh, do we have a meeting uh, two weeks from now? We do not. Nope. Very good. Hey. So we'll be working. We'll be working on this. Uh, uh, and hopefully, Christy, this is something we can get all done before you leave um, on a well-deserved uh, personal time. And, I have uh, already. Um, I've already told Tom that I will make sure to get this um, completed, uh, whether it goes past June thirtieth or not. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for that. I don't want to give it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be hard to pick up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for us to pick up. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So, I'll second Alex first, Tour second. And uh, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Hi. Welcome, welcome back, John. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you, John. Yeah. yeah. Not right, everybody. Good night, everybody. everyone. <laughs>